on. I'm Sister Julianne Highsmith. From when I was very small, I I learned from my mum that you know God was everything and everywhere, and it was always good and compassionate. She learned from her mother, obviously, the this love relationship with God, and didn't know about doctrine. And my dad was not a Catholic, so I grew up with this very deep sense of. God in everything and really a, a very deep close relationship so I'm um, with somebody who God and I were great friends <laughs> but I li lived a very ordinary life very outgoing doing lots of things so and I you know finished my UE and then went to nursing college to study nursing and that was having a great time enjoying life, enjoying the nursing, enjoying my friends, boyfriends, etc. But there was this little nigging, niggling thing that used to come every now and then, like, Julie, I want you. I want you for me. And it was a really getting me, you know, a bit, what's I say, God, can't you just let me go? I'm having a good time. Life is great. But then it became so strong that I thought to myself, well, what about I go somewhere, go to a convent for a few months, and please, God, just let me free after that. <laughs> I'll come back. So I decided that if I was going to try out a, a religious order, first of all, it, it would be a missionary one. Because another thing that was very strong when I was young was, I, and my mother also had this, we're fascinated by people who are different to us. And we had an old lady who lived not far away and we used to take her billies of milk each day and she got the National Geographic. And I just loved those books, looking at people from other cultures. And so there was this, and I loved going anywhere. Wherever anybody was going, I'd say, can I come? So it was going to be a missionary group. I saw in a little magazine, I don't know how I got it, it had these, uh, the Leper Nursing Sisters, Missionary Sisters of the Society of Mary, and it had that, you know, you were called to go and serve the poor in other lands. So I thought, that sounds okay. So I'll give that one a go. So I took some time off and I went to the novitiate and... Um, asked to enter the, you know, had my plan, January, I'd come in June. I didn't really know anything much about them, but I was attracted by the people I met that day and their kind of great simplicity, ordinariness, um, especially the fact that the one who was talk, came to talk to me had been in the swimming pool. It's not what I expected nuns to do. Um, and so I, I did. I went in very quickly. You'd never do that nowadays. I found out later that I shouldn't really have been allowed to come so quickly because I didn't really know much about the order. But they said, well, it's OK, let her give it a go. And um, it was a big thing for me. And I was very open about it with my boyfriend, who said it's OK. It's probably a good practice. Good, formation for being a wife and mother but neither I nor anybody even the parish priest never thought I'd last very long he said she's a very good girl but I don't know about this kind of life for her so I went there and I was really um, taken by the, the different cultures of people who were there because we were training also with uh, Samoans Tongans, Fijians, um, and of course I had, coming from a country area, I had very little experience of actually being with people of different cultures, but I found it fascinating, and so I got through the issue. How did my family feel about it? My dad didn't like it at all. He said, it's a waste of a life, a good life. <laughs> um... And so he wouldn't come to see me during the time I was in the novitiate in postulant, two and a half years. My mother thought she was 
really happy. She had prayed for a long time. She'd say, God, will you take at least one of my children? So she was happy. But she'd never said that to me until I told her I was going because she thought if she told me, I'd do the opposite. <laughs> then I went off to the missions. And right from the beginning, um, I was... I felt very at home. They were very new experiences, but I loved learning new things. Things I, I could never have imagined. Uh, I found that God had given me a gift to learn languages quickly, so that helped. I was really able to get in with the local people, and I loved them. So uh, I've been in Romanian Samoa, then in Vanuatu, then in the Chatham Islands, and then small times in other places. And then my big mission has been Bangladesh. And Bangladesh was just, it was so different from the Pacific Islands. It was a place where there were just people, people, people everywhere. And coming there from the Chatham Islands, I just felt there were so many people that I couldn't cope. I actually used to People were body to body in the street and it became sort of a problem for me in the beginning. I just, so what I used to do was open up an umbrella because we, we always carried an umbrella either for the sun or for the rain. And I'd have it open in front so nobody could get that close to me. <laughs> and it took quite some time. It really, the other missions I think I adapted straight away. But Bangladesh was really, really, it was tough. Um, the poverty that I'd never seen like that before. And there came a time, actually the first three years, I was, I was loving what we were doing, but I was struggling with it. And I thought to myself, when I go home, on my home leave after three years, I probably won't come back here, I'll go somewhere else. And it was really interesting, On towards the end of my holiday, I was up in Auckland, and I was we used to be in Ponsonby at that time, and I was driving down Karanga Happy Road, and suddenly it came to me, everybody in the left lane is going to go left, and the ones in the right lane are going to go right, and the others, you're going to get to the, wherever you're going, there will be power, there'll be water, everything... And then suddenly this thing, it really came to me. Julie, which is what I'm called by most people, chaos is for you. And I went back and really, really loved Bangladesh mm. and have spent, you know, 26 and a half years there. What makes the SMSM different? What makes them different to other missionary orders or... Unique. Well, I I put a few things. I don't think we unique. I don't think anybody's really unique because there's thousands and thousands of religious orders. Mm. But I think we're all a unique combination of things. We're different, and I think what really um, makes SMSM. When I think of SMSM, first is this multicultural existence. Being together with different cultures is really important because it stretches us. It's not easy, but it's very enriching. And you make mistakes and you realise how ethnocentric you are, but you're challenged to go beyond and you're really enriched. Like in your mind is broadened and that that's a kind of a natural thing there, a unique thing. The other thing that I had was, of course, that we are missionaries, we call adjuntes, which means to the exterior, because we're all missionaries, really. But our congregation, really, anybody who wishes to join has to be prepared to be sent anywhere in the world. I think... We're still in, I tried to count the other day, I think we're still in 21 countries. And you can be sent to any of those. Of course, there's consultation and, and that. But if you don't want to go outside of New Zealand, then you will not be accepted as an SMSM. That's one of the basics. 
I I like I think what's really quite different is I mean not different but what's special to me about being SMSM is that it is part of our charism, is to be bonds of communion, to try and be bridges between different people, differences. Um, and that's the focus of our, it's a, it's a very important focus of our congregation. Any advice for young people who are discerning? I think really important thing is just listen to God quietly. What is God saying to you? I mean, some people want to be religious and it's not the place for them. I didn't want to be a religious. <laughs> I had a very close friend uh, who was nursing with me and who had been a novice and was coming out to mature and go back again. And she went again and she wasn't accepted for final vows in another order, not our order. And she was so angry with me. And because this explains this. She was so angry with me. How come you didn't even want to be a religious and you're still there? <laughs> and I said, you know, and I say to anybody, listen to really, really, what is God saying? Not really, what do I want to do? But let God have a bit of a, a right to say what God wants. Be open to nudges. It's okay to go and try. And if you don't make it, it doesn't make you any worse of a person or anything. That is, I mean, I personally was hoping I might get out quickly. <laughs> but God said, no, stay in. And God does not expect people to be perfect. For any vocation. Religious are no better than anybody else. We are human beings and God loves us as we are but I think this advice is take time just to listen to God. Take time in your day. It might be even on the bus or you know or when you've got really nothing much to do. Just God what do you want? And that's and be open and be courageous enough to give it a go, knowing that if it doesn't turn out, that's fine. That's one other good experience in life you've had. How would you describe God in like a sentence or less than a sentence? Well, you know, for me, God is, is all. God is everything. But And I, I keep thinking, how do you put that in words? And you know what came to me today? God is my one true dwelling place. Mm. I really see myself as in God, who, who I am. I think all of us are in God, it's not just religious. But I think he's my dwelling place. And if I'm living in God, dwelling in God, I must be of value. I must be okay, even though I make mistakes and all the rest. So in, in that kind of phrase, it comes from what I felt from the beginning. I'm accepted by God, God's loving, God's compassionate. Um, and I hadn't really thought of it, and I was just saying before I came here, now I think to myself, well, ooh, what's this question? You know, what's a sentence? So I like that. I, that feels right. God is my one true dwelling place.